Hey there guys, welcome to Mikey's Video Game Madness. I just finished vacuuming the house. I know, I'm awesome. Because I just finished vacuuming the house. And naturally, I thought to myself, the next thing that I should obviously do was record the commentary to Dino Crisis 2 on the PlayStation 1. So, this is Dino Crisis 2 on the PlayStation 1. With yours truly, Mikey, Michael, Mike, whatever you want to call me. Um, I've noticed lately that my commentaries have been kind of more in a podcast format versus actual doing a commentary or whatever. A lot of people think that I'm doing reviews, but I'm not. These are more or less impression videos unless I say otherwise. But yeah, it's just been fun. I know I go off topic a lot. It's my channel, so I can kind of do whatever I want. Unfortunately, the price is that of that is the, um lose viewers or people that aren't that aren't interested because I know a lot of people don't really dig the kind of videos that I do and it's it's a double-edged sword it's fun to do what you want at the same time it kind of stinks that not as many people get to see it but I guess it's the price I'm paying and obviously I, I picked what I wanted to do versus what everybody else wanted to see so hopefully people out there that enjoy the kind of content that I enjoy will get something out of this video. So this is a very different type of game than the first one as it's more arcade action oriented. You can see the cutscenes are probably a little bit more detailed than they got the little Terminator time travel ball. I find that amusing. But um, the cutscenes are a little bit more detailed than they were in the first game which you would naturally expect unfortunately they decided to pick a haircut that was probably 15 years out of, out of style when they did this Regina kind of looks more anime like than she did in the first game her hair seems to be more animated than the other game I guess that they got a little bit of physics going on in their CGI cutscenes but man and he's like uh, one of the main characters too. Like, why why did they give him the stupidest haircut known to man? They can't even render it right. It's just horrible. It reminds me of the haircut that, for whatever reason, like in 1992, I think it was. I wanted that haircut, and I still get shudders when I think about it. It's just like give me that haircut I mean all you essentially have to do is take one of your finest china bowls and put it on your child's head and basically take the clippers and buzz around it it's pretty bad but this is more of an arcade game with a Resident Evil style which is kinda weird and the whole Dino Crisis series none of the games have been really the same like I won't be able to cover the third one because I don't have an original Xbox and I don't think there's backup compatibility. I played it a long time ago, like with the rental, and it's like in space with the jetpacks. The dinosaurs are like mutant dinosaurs. They don't even look like regular dinosaurs. I, I don't even, it, it's just flabbergasting the way, way they um went for the third game. There's also some sort of light gun game that came out. I'm not sure if it came out in the US or not. If it did, I had never saw it in the US. I just remember seeing it in magazines. But yeah, Regina does look a lot more anime-like, which kind of makes her look more, even though the cutscenes weren't the best, she looks kind of more humanoid in this, which is fine if you know what they're trying to do with the anime style. But if you don't, I guess that would be kind of weird looking, but yeah, this is an arcade game with Resident Evil like controls, which is really bizarre to me, but it somehow works and it's somehow still fun. You switch between these two characters throughout the game. Um, the one character has a machete, Regina has like this little cattle prod thing and you can see each of their side weapons are on the side. So you like have sort of like a melee attack and a weapons attack. For this type of game, I am surprised that they still kept the bleeding out thing that they had in the first game where like if you get hit in a certain way or too many times, you start to bleed internally and you need like that hemostat is what I believe it's called. And 
for this kind of game, I think it doesn't exactly work because it's expecting you to confront these dinosaurs. Like in the first game, I could see it working better because it was expecting you to run away. But I'm guessing they're just expecting you to be really skilled, which is fine. Like, this is a great game. I'm not putting it down in any way. I'm just saying things that I like and some things that I don't like. And I'm not bringing it up just to impress you that I, don't, I think this game's, like, not all roses and everything. I just try to, try to be honest about everything. Um... The character model of Regina actually doesn't look that much better than the one in the first game, which is surprising since, as you can see, a big difference between this and the um, first game is that the environments are pre-rendered like Resident Evil versus being all polygonal in the first game. It looks like chewing gum, those first aid kits. Like a stick of chewing gum is going to heal me. If it does, that's great. I need to find some at the store for real life. But, um, yeah, this one focuses on time travel and stuff a lot more than the other game. Was it time travel or different dimensions? I'm guessing by the Terminator ball, it's time travel. This is actually the first time that I played this game, like, recently since it actually came out. Like, I played it when it was new. Like, quite quite a bit of it. I don't believe I finished it. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm pretty positive in that. But I got pretty far on it. And that's one thing I remember that I don't remember as much in the first game. Oh, they're trying to do the whole Jurassic Park thing. Oh, you're sur surrounded by raptors and you're pretty much fucked. But... In this game, you're packing a lot more ammunition than you would be in the other games. And the dinosaurs go down easier. As you can see, it encourages combat because you're getting points for combos. One issue you have, you come across in this game is even though it encourages you to be, be like an action hero, if you're not careful, you will run out of ammunition fairly quickly. You'll get a shit ton of health packs, but not a lot of ammunition. Now, I haven't played this game in, in a while. Maybe there's little idiosyncrasies that I'm not picking up that you need to do to get more ammo. But like I said, this is an impressions video. I haven't played this game. Gosh, I don't even know. I didn't even look at the date when it came out, but I imagine it was either the early 2000s or the very late 90s, like 1999. Even 98 seems to be pushing it a little bit. It was towards the end of the PlayStation's life cycle. Obviously, the pre-rendered backgrounds are pretty nice. They're on par with Resident Evil 3 and the later Final Fantasies, which were really nice. A game, there's two games that I'd like to try again that that also had pre-rendered cutscenes, but they did something a little bit different. They actually made like um, parts of the pre-rendered cutscenes being video, which actually moved with you, or they were more animated, which kind of worked, and that was the Fear Effect series, which were kind of controversial because there's like, I believe there were like two lesbians in the game, and they like make out or something, and that was controversial, I guess. It got a lot of hype for that instead of its actual pretty awesome survival horror gameplay, and an early try at cell shaded animation, so for for like a, a rendered model so people forgot all about that stuff and just focused on the scene and you'll see that there's more emphasis on it in the sequel because of that I think or at least I think that's what they were doing but I'd like to go back and try those but they must be fairly rare games at least in the wild because I have not seen a copy since probably since they first came out but you can see they're almost like little levels the way the score counts down and stuff it's fun and it's really satisfying to shoot the, the um, raptors like this and stuff, but it feels really out of place. Like, Dino Crisis, the series as the whole, it almost has an, an identity crisis. Sorry for stuttering there for a bit. But yeah, like every game is completely different. Like like I said, the first one was like Resident Evil. This one's like an, like an action 
type game. I was going to say 3D, but I wouldn't really consider it 3D because of the static screens. Now I'm kind of puzzled why they decided to still use tank controls. I only think the reason why they probably kept tank controls is because they felt that that's the easiest way to navigate the pre-rendered type of cutscenes. I think that's why for a long time Resident Evil like um kept the tank controls but then I think they kept them because then that, that's what the games are known for but I think the early reason for tank controls in Resident Evil even though they kind of admitted it but then they said they changed it for tension I think it was just because it's a way to keep the controls the same every time the camera angle changes because like a game that has like um pre-rendered well not they're not really pre-rendered they're rendered in 3d but they they're kind of static and where where the camera is like the camera rarely moves along with you and that's the ps2 sorry about the sirens i really can't do anything the the terminator donna fate game had like regular controls and when it changed the scene, the controls would like flip and change according to which way you're facing. And it made the controls a little bit confusing versus the tank controls, which always are kind of the same no matter what you do. And there was a little issue with that in the HD remake, but at the end of the day, I kind of preferred the regular controls over the tank controls, even though the tank controls were kind of... um. Sorry that that I keep on stopping. My allergies are really bad. But, um, yeah, like, whenever you change the camera angle, the controls stay the same. But, I mean, with the analog controls, they, they were just more comfortable, even though, like, sometimes the controls would switch around if you let go of the analog stick. Like, if you held the analog stick in one direction, like, your character would still go that direction. But if you let go, sometimes the controls will flip to compensate for whatever way you were facing. So, yeah, this series has identity crisis. Like, the third one's in space, and there's a light gun shooting game. And then we never heard from Dino Crisis again. But I often wonder if they came out with a new Dino Crisis. Like, what route would they go in? Maybe the next one will be first-person shooter. If they ever try to make another one, I don't know. I almost feel like they would probably go in the survival horror route because, um, or route, excuse me, um, just because Capcom seems to be trying to gain back the respect of their older friends despite them coming out with a sequel to Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City, which I thought was fine in its own right. It wasn't anything that would make you feel like, this is the best Resident Evil game I've ever played in my entire life, and then finally breathe in because I forgot to breathe in because I was so excited. But it wasn't a terrible game. But the fact that so many Resident Evil fans didn't like it, it's surprising to me that it got a sequel, which which I, I guess it sold well, but I mean, it was in the discount been pretty fast so I assume that it didn't but I guess I was wrong but I don't really look at sales charts and stuff like that too much when it comes to a game especially if it's one that I'm not interested in if it's a game that like I really would have liked to seen sell a lot then I'd be into it like I don't I think Mad Max is a good game and it's not really doing as well as maybe it should be but I haven't played enough of it to give you my honest, full review opinion of that. But from the little bit of time I spent with it, it seems pretty good. And I can't wait to play it. i got to figure out what games I'm going to play after I'm done making this video. Because um, after this, I'm out of videos to record. So i got to figure out what to do. But I, I got some ideas. I might maybe do half old games half new games no promises i know my videos have been trickling out a little bit slower than usual and that's just because i figured people haven't watched my older videos why am i going to rush out and put a new one maybe they'll watch the older videos first you know like 
it gets more exposure that way I guess not that I'm trying to be a popular channel but sometimes like I'll talk to people and they forget that I've already covered a game that they've asked me about and stuff and sometimes I think it's because I put too many videos out too often and some of my videos get overlooked because of that so I'm releasing them slower plus it's less stress on me because I think when I make videos in a timely fashion I'm not really as into it as I would be if I paced them out more so that's the reason why I'm kind of doing it slower it's more fun this way I'm debating on doing a review of Metal Gear Solid 5 just because I've spent so much time on it like more than I have probably every other game Batman comes pretty close but I'm not even finished with Resident and not Resident Evil Metal Gear Solid 5 the Phantom Pain Whereas I'm, I have finished Batman, it's just there's a lot of stuff to do in Metal Gear Solid Five. It's it's ridiculous. It's almost like it's a it's a RPG's amount of stuff, and it's one of the few games. Batman was another game that I did it where I was doing the side quests and stuff like that. I really would like to get into The Witcher, and I played it right before I got Metal Gear Solid Five, and then I just stopped everything and played that. I also got Mad Max at the same time, feeling I'm going to play Mad Max after Metal Gear Solid Five, and then maybe go back to The Witcher, and then there's a shitload of games coming out in November. Man, it's it's almost overwhelming how many good games are like coming out, because November Star Wars, um, and then Fallout 4, I'm not really banking on Call of Duty Black Ops 3 to be like this long time consuming and grossing experience just because I'm not that crazy about online I'll play it casually and I like the later installments and I think the zombie mode and all that stuff is cool but I don't expect um, Call of Duty being a long experience I do expect however Fallout 4 to be quite amazing so far based on everything that I've seen so that that looks like that fields from um, Jurassic Park the Lost World I, I made a Jurassic Park the Lost World reference in the first video of this game which I guess makes sense since it deals with dinosaurs obviously I would probably reference Jurassic Park but this game has sort of a different at atmosphere and it's able to be more detailed because it's pre-rendered so you kind of see like a mixture of the future and the past and the backgrounds which is kind of a unique look to it at least I think so it has kind of a unique look even when I'm not playing these games I swear the commentary is hard to do I feel like I'm reading a paper in front of a crowd even though there's nobody in front of me I, I swear by like the 6,000th video you'll see some improvement on my commentary but until then please bear with me 6,000 videos. I wonder what systems I'll be playing by then. So we can be alive and long enough to do that many videos. So here's a T-Rex. I get the impression that I was supposed to run from the T-Rex. I don't know whether to call it a her or not. Because it's not Jurassic Park. But yeah, I, I basically wasted all my ammunition. As you'll see. So when I go to play this game for real, and when I'm not recording a video, I'm going to probably start from scratch. Now, out of bullets, which was genius of me. T-Rex seems kind of dumb, though. The character models, I mean, the pre-rendered cutscenes look really nice, and the um, CGI cutscenes are obviously a lot more detailed as well, but... The character models um, of the main character seem to be like on par. I almost think that the reason why they did pre-rendered backgrounds this time is to have more de detailed backgrounds obviously, but I think there's maybe not particularly now because the T-Rex was in the first Dino Crisis, although you always, you never usually got to see the entire body of the T-Rex. You always can tell what you can interact with in these old PlayStation pre-rendered scenes because um, whatever you can interact with is made out of polygons and it just has a different texture to it. Usually a lot less detail. 
Alright, so... We got something that looks like it's from a bad sci-fi movie or whatever. It looks like something from Battlestar Galactica. But yeah, I think the main reason they did pre-render cutscenes was just for the fact that they could add more stuff on the screen at one time so it, since it was more focused on action but this commentary is all over the place but thank you for bearing with me if you're still listening this is a great game I would definitely try it out I would try out all the Dino Crisis I'm not covering the third one because I don't have original Xbox I didn't really like that one but I definitely recommend the first two the third one isn't a terrible game but I'm just personally not into it because of the drastic change it just didn't appeal to me i liked the idea of fighting dinosaurs with modern weapons and not mutant ones but thank you guys so much for watching and i definitely hope you try out some of these older games that i'm covering as well as the newer ones i find fun in a lot of them and i hope you do too thank you guys so much and i'll talk to you on the next video hope you're all doing well take care bye if you want to like comment and subscribe thanks for watching